Hello, introductory tubers! Take number two. <laughs> this, is, this is becoming a bit more of a difficult video to record than I was expecting. Um, so, we're not quite at episode one yet. Today's video, uh, the plan here is to do kind of a, a turn or two of the in-game, uh, just my current campaign, not, not my Let's Play campaign, but just to give a... A bit more of an in-depth how to play. Uh, my my assumption here is that Romance of the Three Kings of Eleven is not super well known. It's a bit of a niche game, given it barely got translated to English, and the current version on Steam isn't even in English at all. So I want to show you guys uh, more of an in-depth, uh, kind of a tutorial. I mean, I might not be the best person to do a tutorial, but I want to at least catch up some of my viewers that maybe once they see how the game is played, they'll be a little more interested in submitting some characters. So we're still open to recruiting, and today's video is going to try to cover a, a one or two turns, not like a super in-depth, but just the basics of how the game works so you can see how we'll play and what you might want your officers to be good at. Um... I have added as many character submissions as I've got so far, and at the end of this video, I will spend a little bit of time going over what we've got so far. So if you're um, if you're curious how your character's looking, I might give you a little sneak peek at the end of today's video. And while we've got you at the beginning to here today, if you're still thinking of joining us, I I highly encourage you to submit a character either on the Discord group or uh, on that first video specifically where we go over all the details I want you to submit. You could just leave your name in the comments, but it's better if you spend a little bit of time uh, giving me a character portrait and, you know, giving me a little bit of uh, customization options that you like. So, yeah, recruitment's still open for that, and because uh, now that we've had like a week or two of open, uh, you know, submissions, I think it's safe to say that if you've, if you've submitted like one so far, please, uh, if you've got two or three, like if you've got a, a you know, you got family, like real life characters you'd like to bring in, or if you've just created up another friend for your character you'd like to be, no problem. At this point, I can say pretty safe. Um, the more the merrier. The game lets you join, uh, lets you create 150, and the closer we get to 100 or so, the better, the happier I will be. Uh, I don't know if we'll stop at 26 or if we'll get, you know, but the, the idea is the in-game officers, there's, there's hundreds of, of officers in the base game. Uh, I'd like you know, I'd like to dilute that with a lot of viewers and custom created characters. So, if we only had 10 custom characters, you know, we might not see them very often, right? We'd just be dealing with a whole bunch of the base game. And the more viewers that can pop up and have some fun, the better, I think. So, uh, yeah, definitely don't worry about submitting a character or two at this point. And uh, I'll see if I can sell you, if you haven't yet, on how the game actually plays. So, before I load my game, I'll, I, I think I messed this up on the introduction video. This is the specific campaign we'll be playing, Rise of Heroes 2, which is a, a custom scenario you have to download if you have the game, which is fine. Um, Rise of Scenarios is not like a historical scenario, so you're not playing... The, the game is generally designed around picking a faction and playing through a, a, a custom scenario, like the Yellow Turban Rebellion, or the once all of the kingdoms are established, you've got Wu, Shu, and Wei, kind of with all the, cla the the classic borders fighting each other off and some of the some of the, the there's lots of events for like you know historical battles where specific uh, details happen between officers with duels and special events uh, we're not really worried about historical so what we've got is a special um, everybody is available no aging kind of scenario and it also gives a whole bunch of factions one city and each one has exactly six officers, which means it's pretty well balanced. In theory, um, anyone could turn out strong. Although you'll probably see soon... Um, well, I guess it's uh, Wu, um, Wei, and Shu be the main three. Probably. Be mostly because Liu Bei, Chao Chao, and Cao Cao, and um, Sun Jian have like, the best officers, mostly. But we'll see what the AI does. There's no guarantee. Um, this also gives us a lot of white starting areas, so I can split up my, my Ankylo factions. So they're not super close. I wouldn't want someone to start next to Cao Cao. I, I think that would be bad for their longevity. The best starts might even be the corners, maybe. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But, um, yeah, so this is the basic plan. Six officers each, and I'll be following the same rules for my factions. So blue Ankylo, white Ankylo, I'll try to give them six officers. And anyone extra will be free, and they will they will be hidden somewhere on the map. And that's true with all the current officers in the game as well. So if you're familiar with the games or Dynasty Warriors or, or whatnot, you would know that Cao Cao has more than six officers in his faction canonically. Um, so what that does is uh, 
they're all hidden, basically. We start with six. It probably includes some of the, the big hitters. Like, I know Liu Bei starts with, like, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei and... I don't know who else he starts with. Uh, Zugai Liang. You know, some of the, the big names that you might expect. But the rest are all hidden in... I'm assuming the author's best guess at where their canonical city starts are split around the, the world, the, around China. So, you kind of have to search them out. They're all hidden. And eventually the AI will uncover their sort of hidden officers. And at some point, you know, there'll be far more than six officers per city. But, you know, it'll take some time to, to get there. That's kind of the early game rush. It's like the exploration phase of a uh, 4X game. So, if, uh, if we've got some... You know, some viewers, they'll be split around like that, too, in theory, to be discovered. Anyway, I've already gone in for five minutes. This is this is going to be perhaps a long video with a lot of explanation, but uh, hopefully you guys will get a bit of an idea how this game works. So, my sort of side campaign that I actually will probably try to finish before my Let's Play, because the game is sometimes difficult, and I'm not doing super hot. I went with Liu Bei, because he's kind of the hero of the books and kind of your standard front character uh, generally described as the hero at least um, a lot of games in the a lot of games that follow the romance of the three kingdoms story you play as Liu Bei or his generals so it kind of I, I got a lot of it seems kind of fun <laughs> so anyway uh, we're a fair number of turns in like what did it say it started in two the year 250 so I think we've been playing for seven years and uh, we've done reasonably well. We're one of the, the contenders, at least. But uh, we're kind of in a bit of a rough situation, and uh, yeah. There's a lot of things to cover, so I might bounce back and forth. So forgive me as I uh, try to give an intro here in a game that's rather complicated. Hopefully the game audio is alright. I've been struggling with... Some of the background music is very loud. We're in combat music right now, and hopefully it's... I think I've got it balanced better this time. So, first things first, to introduce the general over, uh, GUI, the interface, uh, there's a lot of things you could look at, and I will get into city and officer details later, but let's start with easy stuff. First thing, little icon over here is your season. Uh, I'm pretty sure pink is for spring. Uh, it's also January, well, month one, day 21, year 257. Um, I can't open up a calendar in-game, but I'm assuming... I'm pretty sure that's what that means. I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> but let's look at the map first, because this is probably an easier way to look at... This is a nice summary of the world. So the green is my faction for, for um, Liu Bei, or, or Shu. And we started here in Yong'an, and let me just be clear, I'll mention this a few times, but my pronunciation will be terrible. I'll try, but, you know, I, I, I don't speak Chinese or ancient um, Chinese. So <laughs> I do the best I can. Um... So we started here, and I kind of expanded to the east, and then I was trying to expand south, but I got blocked, and you'll see in a second here. Um, I was hoping to get the classic Three Kingdom, um, blue up north, red to the east, uh, green to the southwest. That would be kind of the standard Three Kingdoms, but I've expanded a bit out of line here. I think the natural border was along here, or something like that, or maybe even here. Uh, anyway, it, it's fine. Um, Cell Cell usually takes, like, the whole north, right? So, you will probably still do it. Um, but yeah, the big squares are your cities. The diamonds are, um... I don't know what the game calls them. They're ports and gates, and... They're, like... They're not nearly as important as cities, but they are kind of important. There's also a map mode that shows troop density, where... Which cities have the most troops. You can see a bit of a... Um... A, a key here, like a legend. So, um, at least for troops, you can see, like, I've got a ton of troops here. It's uh, very dense. I've got a lot of troops up here. And there's some places that have, like, no troops. There's also a food map. Don't worry about that. But troops and food are perhaps your two most important resources. Districts are, like, uh, you can auto... It's like auto managers. It's putting cities under the control of the AI. And I haven't done it yet because it's annoying. But in the Let's Play, I will. Uh, at some point, after I've gotten a certain number of cities... I will plan to delegate one of my one of my viewers, rather than a random general, to uh, control a district, and basically then they just sort of have free reign over, you know, however many cities I give them, and hopefully we'll give them a border, and I'll just say, hey, conquer that if you can, and we'll see what happens. I mean, that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. And there's also a gold map where you can see where 
uh, just a just a summary. I probably won't pull these up too often. Um, once we get playing the game, it's not too important. You can also see where the Emperor of China is, Luoyang or whatever, Laoyang probably something like that. Um, maybe we'll try to capture the Emperor or something. As always, Cell Cell has them at the moment. Uh, I mean that's pretty normal. I guess there was a there's a big there's a there are scenarios where Dong Zhao has him and. Maybe even Lu Gu steals them for a bit or something. I, there's there's a bunch of a variety of scenarios, historical and fictional, fictional that play with him. That's where we're talking about the, the imperial court stuff. So technically, the empire, the emperor is over here, and one of the faction leaders might have captured him. So you know, something to think about. Anyway, that's just a quick map overview. Uh, this number here, AP 160, that's your action points. I think the game would call them. And whenever we try to do something, like let's say we want to recruit some soldiers, or uh, well, let me pick a city where we can recruit. Maybe up here. Oh right, city. What am I doing? Okay, whatever. I was just looking for any command, but this is the build outfit. Is you know build weapons basically, and that would cost us 20 AP. Everything we do costs us AP as well as officers. Officers can do one thing per turn, and you need a certain number of AP to do the thing, basically. That's kind of the resource per turn. And I think as your rank goes up and the more cities you hold, your AP will go up. Like, the number you can gain per turn goes up. I think it's a maximum of 255 that you can hold. Like, it does... You don't lose it at the end of the turn. So if I only have 50 AP and I hit end turn, don't stress about it. Unless we hit the cap of 255, then I'm probably wasting a little bit. That's also why you make districts eventually, because you, as your faction leader, still have a maximum amount of AP that you can handle for developing your cities. And if you uh, assign a couple cities to a, a different officer to be a district, then they will use their own AP to run those, and you can focus on whatever you're focusing on. So that's a later game thing. TP here is technique points, I believe, and it's basically your research. Um, so there's like a research tree, well... Tree is a bit of an overstatement, but you start with level 1 techs, and then once you get them, you can go to level 2. And I'm not going to get into all the details at this exact moment, but the technology is, it's cool. And, um, you basically, you can power up your your army, your, um, construction, your overall troops, uh, siege equipment. Uh, fire is borderline magic, um, literally fireballs and lightning bolts and stuff. Um, although you could maybe consider it people throwing torches at the enemy fortifications and making traps, but sometimes it's legitimately just magic. But, uh, you know, it's fun. So, research, it's, uh, not too complicated. It, we won't have to spend too much time on that. You will get technique points by doing things like fighting battles, building stuff, conquering cities. Um, you could lose it by losing cities, I think, as well. And then you, basically, you invest your tact technique points, um... With money, you spend some gold as well, and, you know, it shows you how many, it's like technique cost, gold cost for each rank, and, um, you know, you need officers to actually do the research, it takes some time, it, like I said, no need to stress out about that, it's fairly straightforward. Um, we do have, like, main menu and tech save and stuff, no big deal there. Um, info screen is what I'll usually leave up, or, sorry, not, info screen is, like, more in-depth than we'll usually go through. But if you want a different kind of summary, you know, that's my faction, Liu Bei, and it does give us a, a summary. Our total gold, expenses, revenue, surplus, food, you know. We should be food sufficient. I don't know why that's an X. Our food use is way less than our harvest. Anyway, you know, maybe that doesn't update until I spend a turn. But it does show you your sovereign and your strategist. And you can have a summary of all your equipment throughout your entire faction, how many of every building you've built, and you can check all your um, enemy faction leaders as well. I probably won't go through this very often because it doesn't, you know, I mean, maybe if you're trying to decide, should I invade this guy? You know, how many how many soldiers has he got? Uh, can we see? Or we can see how many barracks he's got. You know, he's, he's got four barracks and he's got a bunch of spears ready to go and I don't know. I feel like we probably don't have to worry about that too much. It does tell you about their relations, and I mean, I haven't done a lot of diplomacy in this in this run, so most of my neighbors hate me, but, you know, it's fine. We win by the sword, die by the sword. And you can see the green ankylo, you know, you can see it's, it is quite cool. I should at least have a quick summary of these while we're playing every now and then, because we'll see some of our created characters here, uh, if they've worked their way up the ranks in other, in other factions, so, you know, 
Plus, uh, there'll be faction leaders for other factions that will be literally blue ankylo, red ankylo, green ankylo. Uh, is there anything else I need to cover on this one? You can see all, I mean, you can get all the details you want. It, sure, it's all in there. I only have the one district in mind. And how much, you know, anyway. Point is, there's a lot of information here. I won't go through it very often because I haven't been going through it very often here. Uh, but if I ever want to look for something, this is all the items in the game too. I don't even think I have any. Um, there's a bunch of special items your officers can equip. I don't think I have a. No, I must have a couple. Right, I've got two on Liu Bei, a hex mark horse, and a fancy sword. Uh, but I don't have any of the other cool stuff. So as we find stuff, I'll try to talk about that. Um, yeah, anyway, th this could go on. We could spend all day talking about those. I want to kind of not do a super in-depth summary, just focus on the important stuff that you might want to know. So, those are the top sort of quarter of this uh, menu. There's, of course, the mini-map. Um, you can turn on or off the, the smaller settlements. I probably will just leave it like this. And then there's uh, some settings for... I think you can toggle units on it or off. We might just... Oh, oh, that's for... Okay, I know what that means. Uh-oh. The game the game actually crashed. That's not a good sign. <laughs> I have had a couple crashes, and I know how to reload a busted save, too. So, the game does make an autosave. Oh, man, that's super loud. Sorry, guys. Um, the game does make an autosave every turn, even if you don't save, but you have to kind of mess around to reload it. I think it like reset my uh, volume when I when it crashed there. Let me just double check my in-game volume is good. That this is very unfortunate. In the tutorial video, we have a crash. No, no, we're good for volume. Just the, you know, the vol classic video game. The in-game volume settings don't actually affect the loading screen stuff. But yeah, anyway, sorry, a crash. The toggle unit stuff is these are a bunch of my units down here. This will turn off some of their information, depending on what you want to know about them. Portraits, um, no portraits, no information. So it might be easier to click things, but I'll probably leave it on most of the time, unless it crashes. <laughs> and squares, yeah, I mean, you could use the hex square system if you like. Well, we're using it one way or the other, but honestly, you don't really need to see it. It's fine. You can just highlight the square you want to move to. I think it looks nicer without the, the tiles. You can turn that off if you don't like it. I think that's all. There's a there's a log down here that shows you what's been going on, and this is your end turn uh, button. So, that's sort of interface catch up. <laughs> We're just 20 minutes in, no big deal. Let's look at our cities. The cities are kind of the core of the game. We have six cities here, you can see by the little symbol, and then a bunch of non-city I don't know what a good name to call these are, but there's gates and ports at least. And um, the ports and gates are much simpler than the cities, so maybe I'll start with them. Um, they work similarly in that if you click on one, you'll get all the stats for them. They hold, like, the resources are not uh, communal. Every location has its own set of resources, gold and food. Uh, HP is like the strength of the walls, the number of troops, the willpower for the troops the equipment for the troops, um, with how many officers are here, and like, that's like how many is available. So it could say six out of six, or three out of six if three of them have already taken their action for the turn, and then enemy officers that have been captured. So that's like a very short version. The cities will have more, but you know, the gate has its own. Um, if we click on it, uh, or right click on it, yeah, detailed info, you can get more information. This comes up, the shortcuts to the faction, they're one of those lists. This will give you, like, more about this specific gate or city. Shows you who's running it, if there's anyone running it. And um, it does give you, like, how much food you'll get from the harvest, how much revenue it will make. And for non-cities, these are, I believe, just percentages of what the city makes. So if the city makes a uh, thousand gold per turn or whatever, uh, the gate associated with it might make 20% of that or something. So they are income generators, but much less than the city, and you don't really get buildings. So they're just simple versions, kind of connected to the city, that kind of just function on their own. 
but you still have to man them with soldiers and gear if you want to do stuff. But but they're not like they don't really have jobs. Like we can't we don't have city interface. Like at a city, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. At a gate or a port, there's no city option. You can still drill your soldiers, uh, march your soldiers. Uh, I should go over all these commands in detail at a city, but there's a limited amount of commands at these basically, and they're simpler. That's that's really the older is to know about gates and ports. Ports allow you to move an army into the water. It doesn't look all that watery to me, but um, the only way to, to, to travel on water is to go through a port. So if I want to invade this city, we would have to march our soldiers over here or leave the port and sail across and then land over here, take over this port that they control, and then march on the city. So sea crossings, naval crossings become a little bit complicated. They're not my favorite, but you know we have to deal with it. There's lots of big rivers. That's ports and, ports and gates. For the most part, we don't worry about them too much. What we will be doing is every now and then they'll stock up a bunch of gold and food and we'll ship that into the city that actually uses it. Or it'll be a defensive port, which like this one, for instance, uh, Zhonglu keeps getting attacked by some of my neighbors. There's a couple neighboring cities across the river. So they keep attacking it. So I'm starting to build some towers around it, some turrets. And I keep soldiers here and I fight them off, basically. So some places will be defensive fortifications. Sometimes they'll just be kind of in the middle of your... If they're just in the middle of your um, nation or your faction... No one ever attacks Wu, Wu Xiang anymore, so we just, every now and then, it builds up a bunch of resources, we just ship it into the capital, no big deal. Okay. Those things, not too complicated, I think those are simple enough. Cities are the core of your faction, though. So I'll start with Yong'an, which is my capital city, or at least where we started. Um, again, you get that summary if I mouse over it. Do I need to cover any of that, any more detail? Gold you use to pay your officers primarily, build uh, build anything, buildings, build weapons, uh, ships, uh, siege equipment, pay your officers, or uh, you can increase their loyalty with bribes basically, you can send money to other factions to make friends, you know, gold is standard resource. Food is probably more important, uh, you need it, if you send, uh, let's see, do I have any armies? I do have some armies down here, we'll go over them a little bit more later. But, um, you need your... <laughs> your army should have food, because they eat a lot of food every turn. And once they run out of food, bad things start to happen. So, um, you need to stockpile a lot of food if you want to make a offensive action, let's just say. Um, and I think if your cities run out of food, uh, peasants start to starve and bad things happen. There is no population, per se. Um, it's just kind of abstracted out. There's just infinite peasants, I guess. <laughs> um... So you get like the full breakdown here in the uh, city. Gold, like I said, gold food, simple. Order is something um, the ports don't have, but that's like the um, the control of the city. If it gets low, sometimes bandits will pop up. Um, there might be some bad events that are tied to order. I don't think you get much for having a high order other than not bandits, but I, I could be wrong on that. Generally speaking, when you... When there's enemies nearby, or you're recruiting soldiers, or training soldiers, or time goes by, your order will go down. And then you will do inspections with your officers. It tells you all about it here. And your officers, you'll spend some money to enforce order upon the city. Uh, if I have a city that does not have maximum order, I can show that off right now. But I might not. <laughs> they might all just be happy. Super happy cities. Maybe, maybe I just end a turn real quick here. We'll see what happens. Blah, blah, blah. I just... We'll re I'll reload when I want to reload. It's fine. Come on. Does anyone, anyone want to need some order? It's really hard to demonstrate when... I'm not in a great... But anyway, believe me when I say... <laughs> inspections will raise order. And I'll show that off, off many, many times. That's a very common command. Uh, what else is there to show off for stats? Facilities is the number of buildings, so you can see these things on the map here. In a in a new city, when we conquer one, or at the er beginning of the game, they'll be empty like this, just barren land, and then you will choose what to build on each slot. Um, there are some adjacency bonuses, so we have markets that make money. Uh, each one of these, I can't remember exactly how much money they make, it doesn't really matter. They make money, 
And then a mint makes every adjacent market make 50% more money. So you do try to build up sensibly. And then there's the same system with uh, farms. You Farms make you food. And, well, this is a smith. Normally you'd put a granary here if you wanted more food. And the granary would make your farms more efficient. Um, so that would be under the develop command. You can build a variety of things. And um, they also unlock more options. So if you build a barracks, you can recruit soldiers. If you build a smith, you can build weapons, which we have options to build spears, pikes, crossbows, and horses. Well, the smith builds you the weapons. You need a stables for horses, and you need a, um, a foundry for, for siege weapons, or a shipbuilder to make ships. So different buildings will allow you to build different things under the outfit command. Uh, barracks for soldiers, food, money, that's kind of the main stuff. I don't, there's not that many buildings, it's not that complicated. Um, that part of the game is fairly straightforward. Like, you can see over here in Chengdu, this is more complicated. We've got a mint with a whole bunch of markets. We've got a workshop, we've got a stable, a smith, a barracks, and then we've got a granary with a whole bunch of farms around it. So this city can do almost everything. It can recruit soldiers, it can make basically anything except ships because it doesn't have a it actually doesn't have any water next to it um but yeah that's like a fully developed city kind of thing some cities are some cities have more building slots than others so this one has 18 so you can fit a lot more buildings in the hp is just the hp it's like the the walls of the city um if you're trying to conquer a city you can either drop the hp to zero and destroy the walls and you'll take the city or the sub city or you can kill all the troops in it. So we've got this little number here is 33,000 troops. There's lots of soldiers in there. So it might be easier to break the walls than it is to kill 33,000 soldiers. Uh, it just depends what you're trying to do. But there's sort of two methods of conquering and those are the two main methods. Uh, let's see, what else could we talk about cities? HP, so troops. There's the troops there, there's the troops there. Uh, more troops do eat more food. So as you... As you, in, inside the city, um, I'm pretty sure there's a correlation between the number of soldiers and the number, the, the amount of food they use uh, as upkeep. And then the harvest is based on how many farms you have and all that. Although you don't get, I think, like, the way these games, I don't know the exact numbers, but as you go through the seasons, like, you'll get some food every season change, but you get most of it in, in autumn. You know, the, the fall harvest is the big one. The winter harvest is much, much smaller, and then spring and summer are decent. So, if you're trying to get a lot of food, maybe attacking after the fall harvest is a good idea. You know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I don't worry about keeping track of that too much. It's not once a year like some of the older games. There were some Romance of the Three Kingdoms games where you only got food once a year. That was a bit rough. So this game doesn't do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty important. So more troops means you're stronger, but you have to feed them. Willpower is based on training your troops. So you drill them to make them more trained. Uh, we've got, you know, build buildings, recruit more troops. If you recruit troops, and I, I didn't go over this, but every action costs you those AP points. I talked about that, right? I didn't cut that out when I crashed the game earlier. It might cost you some gold, cost you some AP, and depending on the troops you assign, and it will auto try to assign the best ones, but based on your stats and maybe you'll have like a, a skill that helps, you will get a certain amount of, of return. So these three officers would spend their turn, my action points, 300 gold, and we would gain, well, those soldiers. Just like that. Bam. And we also get some, tech, some technique points. So that specifically dropped the town's order a little bit, but we got more uh, soldiers out of it. So if your if your order is low, then you could go to inspections, spend some more action or yeah action points, some more gold, some more officer turns, and get that order back up. But now we've got uh... so now we have more soldiers, and our order is the same. But our troops' willpower has gone down. So you're like, well, okay, maybe I should drill them as well. This doesn't cost any money, but three more officers, based on their war statistic, uh, will raise the willpower up. And we're capping it out, so this might be inefficient. We don't actually need that many. But, um, you know, there. And that just cost us 60 AP because, you know, we're trying to show it all off. 
Um, so that's, willpower is used in uh, a variety of. Uh, well, well, we'll do the army section after all the city section, but techniques and strategies by your soldiers require will. And if you run out of willpower, I don't know. They might fight worse or something too. Actually, I don't think they just run away and retreat. But, but they might. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, weapons. Um, a real quick breakdown of the weapon, or of the troop types. If you don't give them any weapons, they're swordsmen, and swordsmen suck. They're just bad. If you give them spears, they have very average stats, and spears beat cavalry, horses. Um, if you give them pikes, they are defensively focused. They're, they'll have better defense if an enemy attacks them, but they'll deal a little bit less damage on the offense than a spear would, anyway. But pikes are stronger. Pikes, uh, sort of, uh, rock, paper, scissor, they beat spears. They're a little weak to horses, but they're really good against spears. And then horses, cavalry units, while they also have a higher mov movement, they can move farther on the map, they have more attack stat and weaker defense stat, and, uh, they are bad against spears, good against pikes. So you've got that kind of, uh, rock, paper, scissor, kind of Fire Emblem style. Uh, bows, on the other hand, have ranged attacks, but slightly lower stats than spears. So, uh, spears are, like, good at attack and defense, whereas pikes are great at defense and decent at attack. Uh, bows are, like, decent at attack and defense, um, but they're generally weak against everything. If they get, if they get melee attack, they're generally pretty bad, but they get that ranged attack, so, you know, they have a different strategical purpose. Uh, and then the siege weapons, um, there will be some kind of ram or juggernaut and a tower or catapult as you learn technology. Uh, the, the juggernauts and rams are generally better against HP damage, so they focus on destroying walls, and the towers sort of focus on killing soldiers. It's kind of the main difference there. Mm, and then ships are... well, if you don't have a ship... When you send your army into the bat, into the into the ocean or the not the ocean into this sea, uh, the rivers, your troops will have boats by default. Uh, I think I could see it here. Yeah, this is when you create a, a, a unit. We'll talk about this more when we talk about units. But you know, you pick what to equip them. If they walk into the water, they just have boats, and they're pretty bad at naval combat with a boat. Or you build them a ship and equip them with a ship, and they get more movement and I, they fight better in uh, in in naval battles. Um, so that's fairly straightforward equipment. Um, your units, your officers, like we went over in the recruitment video, they all have different skills. So some of them are good at fighting with spears, cavalry, bows, ships. So that's further uh, adjusted. You give them uh, a unit of a squad of... of I, I should probably at least build one of these. Let's go to go back to Chengdu here. Military, march to, to create one. And we'll just say... Let's say I want to make a cavalry unit. Well, you could, you could auto-setting it, just click Cavalry, and it'll try to give you the best unit of Cavalry it can, based on the officers available, which aren't very many, so this is actually a bad city, because I use them all to train things. Maybe up here in Zetong, if we go Military, March, and I say, like, make a Cavalry unit, oh, Red Ankylo here, or a Bow unit, or a Pike unit, and they'll try to auto-do it, they'll auto-generate it, and it is kind of complicated at first glance, but... You can control how many troops you give them up to the officer's maximum, which we'll talk about later. You can decide to give them gold or not, and how much food you want to give them. More food means they can march for longer, and if they run out of food, it's bad. Uh, it does give them a unit stats total. It's based on what weapon you give them, the affinity of the leaders, the war war and uh, leadership stats of the three, the leader and the deputies. Uh, you know, the, the aptitude with the weapons they've got, you know, it's, there's a lot of things going into it, basically. Um, if you give them ships, they'll be better at sea, or you can give them siege weapons, or, you know, whatever else. Um, the game does auto-generate it, but you can manually figure it out yourself. Uh, this screen shows you all your officers in this city. You can see some officers can command more units than others. I'll save that for another topic. But basically, you could try to find someone who's got a good aptitude, like Zhang Fei, really good with spears and pikes, can hold 8,000 units, pretty good offensive stats. Seems like him running a unit of spears is a good idea. He also has a very powerful skill, and then we put some deputies in here. Pang Tong is really good at intelligence, which means we won't be murdered by fire, and maybe we can do our own um, strategies. This is a very powerful unit. Just, you know, the game auto-generates it, no big deal. And then you create it, and then you march them around. And they can do attacks, they can do strategies, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. That's like, the basics. 
I'm still trying to get through my city development, but <laughs> marching just sends them out, you know? You, you, you develop your unit. Revenue, how much money it makes. Harvest, how much food it makes. Rate, there's a merchant. Every city has a unique merchant that updates once a month. If there are enemies inside the zone of control, which you can see highlighted here, you don't have access to merchant or a bunch of commands get cut out, to be honest. But generally, you can use merchant. It does take you um, action points. But you can send someone, and based on their politics, they get a better rate. And every... The rate here shows you the um, the trade rate, basically. It's modified by your pol politics score. But you can make a lot of food or gold off of trading. It's almost broken, mechanically speaking. If you can find... Um, really efficient trades. I'm not sure if there are any right now. Yeah, this is the maximum. So, this is the best deal to buy. You are spending one gold to get seven food. You don't want to sell food, but buying food is incredibly... That's as good as it gets. I think one to three is the, the cheapest. Or, sorry, the most expensive. One to seven is the cheapest. So, at this city, if we happen to have some gold lying around. We could go to the merchant. Hopefully you've got someone who's good at politics. We we don't really, but if you had like a hundred score politician, then you'd see like 120% or something trading. And you just spend all your gold and buy some food. Now this city has a tremendous amount of food already, so it doesn't really matter. I probably already did this. Um, but yeah, you can buy food, buy, buy low, sell high. You could even uh, transport that food if you wanted. So if this, this, this town, you could spend all your gold and buy, you know, millions of food if you could, then transport it to a nearby city. If this place, this is a much better deal, but it does go to one gold to three eventually. In theory, then you could go up there, have another high politics score. And this time you'd, uh, you'd sell all that food and you'd end up uh, more than doubling. If, if you go, if you go 1 to 7, 1 to 3, and you actually do that, you're, you're more than doubling your, your gold or food. Um, although, with a high politics score, you actually make money selling one turn, buying the next turn. You can only use the merchant once per turn. You can't, like, cheese it in the same turn. But, like, this week, we could buy a bunch of food here. And if you had someone with good trading results, he, he gets the 4 to 1. It's more like 4.4 4. 4 to 1, right? And then next turn, he could uh, sell, and you would also get that 11% that or whatever it is in the selling results as well. So you, you end up with a net positive. All you're spending is your action points and your officer turn. And even if you just... As, it, it, the bulk matters. You'd have to use a lot to really make a big difference. But as long as you can do big bulk trades, that also makes a lot of money. And it's kind of cheesy. I don't plan on doing that. I do plan on buying low, selling high. Uh, and maybe transporting some food between towns. I don't really plan on just at the same rate buying and selling constantly. It does kind of burn through your action points anyway, and it feels a bit scummy. Okay, merchants. I think we're almost through all the city stuff. Officers I talked about already. Number of officers in the city. Number of available officers for actions. Prisoners, we'll talk about that very shortly. And free officers that we know about that we could recruit. So we'll, we'll, we'll start getting to that kind of stuff now. I think I've covered all the city commands. Research just allows you to research if you've got the tech, the technique points. So if I had the minimum would be 2,000 now to unlock a tier 2. If I had the money for it, like the gold, the technique points, and some free officers, then I could just click to research. Merchant, we did inspections, we did building weapons, recruiting soldiers, building buildings. Drilling, training, marching out with new new units. Transport is just a... I think I actually have one somewhere. I can show this quick too. Transport is just sending like convoys between cities. Um, they move quicker than non-cavalry. They're not really fighting units. They can technically supply nearby military units. So if you have a convoy with a whole bunch of food, which is something I maybe should have done. <laughs> if you happen to have a transport unit near your starving units, they can supply them food. Uh, so there's some tricks like that that are pretty cool. I haven't quite got to that level of strategy. But at the very least, you can transport stuff to your cities. And um, 
we'll have them remain here. So yeah, then they they just move stuff around. That's 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 easy. No no need to stress about that. Oh boy, this is gonna take all day. This this is gonna be a long video. I feel. Personnel. This is dealing with your officers. Simply, you can move them to a different city. No big deal. That's nothing. Summoning. It's the same thing except the other direction. I want to summon a sol uh, officers to this city. So move sends them from here to wherever you want. Summoning sends them from wherever you want to here. Just one directional. You can. It doesn't really matter because you could just go to that city and summon. You could always use summon or you could always use move. Or you could use both. It's fine. Search. Now, this only matters kind of in the early game. Once all the officers have been found, searching no longer matters. But at the beginning of the game, you know, there's a lot of officers that you don't... That you can't see. They're not in the game yet. Also, I uh, I really need to chill this music out. It's too serious. It's it's in combat music right now. And uh, it's, it's killing me. I'm just going to turn that down a little bit more. It's, the music for the game's fine, but whew, it's too intense, man. I gotta chill. Just take a breath, Blue Anculum. <laughs> so searching will try, and your your strategist will help. I haven't really talked about strategists either. There's a lot of things to talk about. Your strategist tries to give you advice on what to select. You could always manually do whatever you want. I could send Liu Zhan to try to find someone in Zhang An. But the strategist, if you've got a good strategist with high stats will basically say, I recommend you send this person, they have a good chance of finding someone or whatever. Or, I don't think there's anyone left, so don't bother, basically. Um, so, oftentimes we'll just trust the strategist, but you could probably play a harder difficulty by not using a strategist, because they, uh, you know, they, they kind of make the game a little bit more easy and automated, but that's fine. But yeah, searching is just try to find somebody. If you do find someone, you'll have a chance to try to employ them. Uh, as part of the search action. Or, if we know someone is available, and you won't see them here if they're hidden, once you've searched them out, they might, if you can't recruit them from the search command, they will show up as free. And, um, it'll show you how far away they are, if they're, lo well, once they've been recruited to a different faction, they'll have a loyalty to them, or maybe you captured them from an enemy army. So, you can generally try to recruit anybody, but it's a lot easier with free, um, commanders. So, if I wanted to recruit this Liu Shi lady, and you can see her stats, and where she is, uh, your strategist will try to suggest anybody in this city that could recruit her. And I think there's some hidden stats, because if you fail to recruit her, I think they're unrecruitable for a while. So, like, if I send somebody and they fail, she kind of gets, like, a negative disposition to our faction for some amount of time. Eventually, you can try again. Um, but it's better to wait, generally, until your strategist is, like... Yeah, send this person. I'll see if I can get uh, a positive result here. Maybe one of my cities that has a lot of people in it will be easier. So personal employ. Uh, doesn't. It might be a point where we can't really recruit that chick. Is there anyone else that looks reasonable? Ah, so this is Zugai Liang suggesting that if I want to recruit recruit Zhao Zi or however you say his name, who's currently our prisoner, we captured him in war. He thinks that Liu Bei can handle it. And it's probably because we have 100 charisma. That's the main recruitment stat. <laughs> but there are other things. This is where being friends or family all, or disliked or enemies, there's, there's a lot of things that go into the calculation of whether this works or not. A good strategist tends to predict correctly. But he could still be wrong. We could try and fail still. But in theory, this would be pretty likely to work, probably. Now, if this guy happened to be related to someone on the team, uh, sending a close friend or a familial relation is much more likely to work. Of course, there are some skills and some charisma that helps, so... Anyway, that's kind of how you steal officers, and you can always try to steal officers from your enemy. So, if we sort by loyalty, which is what I usually sort by, because then it shows free agents. Um, you know, for instance, this, uh, this guy's got slightly lower loyalty. Uh, Zhu Zun, Hu Zun, I don't know, whatever. But he works for this guy, Sun Zhan, and it shows you where he is and how far away he is. Like, it's a long trip. But his loyalty isn't maxed out, and there's a pretty good chance Guan Yu could just go recruit him. At least, at least Zhu Gei Liang thinks it. Now, I probably won't try to poach officers like this too often because it's kind of cheating. Well, it's, it's not cheating, but it's bit, it's a bit 
it's a bit unfair. The AI can do it to you, but they're not very good at it. You could definitely abuse it. Once you've got some high charisma, powerful officers, you could steal everybody you wanted. Now, it might not work at all if the enemy is paying their officers enough to keep them loyal. So, in this situation, Liu Bao, there's probably no way to steal him because he's got very high loyalty. So, it's not like a insta you definitely win kind of trick. But other than special, like, what I, what I might, my rule might be, I'm only going to try to steal viewer officers if their loyalty for wherever they're working has dropped. I'm not sure you can steal 100 loyalty anyway, honestly. 100 loyalty might be immune, which would make some sense. But if we check the screen and we see, um, I don't know, say Cat Tankulo is working for the enemy, right? If I see him here with, like, 94 loyalty, I might be like, what? Maybe I'll try to recruit them, or we'll, we'll check every now and then, see if we can, see if anyone is capable. Uh, there are ways down in diplomacy that you can lower an officer's loyalty to their liege and then steal them, and that gets really abusive if you do that. But hey, maybe we'll show it off. It's no big deal, but I don't think the game is so difficult we need to worry about that. Other than, you you know, if someone leaves a comment saying, Blue, I'm working for someone I hate, please save me. Maybe I'll be like, okay, we'll see if we can make a rift between your character and Cao Cao, and then I'll, I'll recruit you to my cause. Or maybe I'll just try to recruit everybody. You know, we'll see. <laughs> Personnel. Also, reward. If I have any officers that are not at 100 loyalty, I can spend gold from the city and a few action points, it does cost us some, to pay them gold to bribe them to be loyal, basically. If you don't want the enemy stealing your officers, it's a pretty good idea. Award is the same thing, except special items. So if I was like, you know what, and I'll, I'll try to roleplay this a little bit, but I'm like, you know, Blue Ankylo, you've been doing a good job. I'm going to give you a cool sword, right? This is Liu Bei's dueling sword. It's his, but I'm giving it to Blue Ankylo because he did good. And maybe I'll do this on a, uh, if I get items, and I honestly, in this game, I only have the two. But if we manage to steal some from enemies or conquer cities that have them or whatever, Maybe I'll try to give them out to viewers that lead armies, or maybe do strategies, or something. Uh, they make a big impact on the game. You know, if they do a good job, maybe I'll give them some kind of special reward. And uh, they do actually have effects, often in duels, but um, you know, there seems like a cool way to do that. Oh boy, we made it through three. <laughs> diplomacy. I'm never going to do diplomacy, don't worry about it. But <laughs> you can try to pay a lot of gold to one of the enemy factions. My general idea here is it doesn't work very well and it takes a lot of time, like the travel time to get there, plus a thousand gold per visit. You can only have one per, like if I'm trying to make Cell Cell like me, I can only have one, um, one of these goodwill commands at a time and it locks up my officer and it sucks a fair amount of gold out and it doesn't guarantee he'll like us or stop attacking us. I think there are ways of, again, kind of cheesing it where you just shower them in gold until they're forced to like you and eventually you can get an alliance and it's like the AI never breaks alliances or something and you just, it makes the game a lot easier. I kind of plan on keeping it more of a free-for-all. If the enemy allies with each other, fine. I don't actually think they really have been. But I haven't allied with anybody and I'm doing fine. And uh, it feels like when we're playing our campaign, I'll probably... So, th th what I'm trying to say is, I probably won't use diplomacy very much. Uh, if it comes up, maybe I'll try, but... I don't have a lot of success with Goodwill and Alliance working anyway. Ceasefire... I don't even know what you're trying to say here. I think it's trying to get you out of hostile. But I don't know how you'd even con convince them to do it. I've never really had good luck with these. Because the AI just seems to attack you anyway, and... Whatever. Uh, solicit Surrender is something that would be cool if we could pull it off. Um, if, for instance, we are destroying someone and they're almost dead, so Liu Yan down here, for instance, is... If I took over this city and they only had a one city left that was really weak, or maybe we just killed all their officers or something, maybe, and we had a lot of strength, maybe it is possible that we could solicit their surrender and they would just give up and instead of having to militarily conquer them, they would just surrender. I, again, have never really seen this work. <laughs> so, if it's possible, 
I'll probably miss it anyway. You probably need really high charisma or something, and luck, and the enemy probably has to be basically beaten to the point where you might as well just march your army in anyway. So, again, like I was saying, diplomacy is probably not the focus of my let's play. Exchange is a prisoner exchange. If an enemy has some of your prisoners, some of your officers, and you have some of their officers, you can trade them. That's fair. Uh, although you could just conquer the city that has your officers and rec recruit them, I guess, or re rescue them. And then request reinforcements is basically allies only. Have them send allies. I don't actually know exactly how this works. I don't think they give you troops. I think they send an army to try to conquer a city that you tell them to, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm not sure any of these really work very effectively. So I'm not going to worry about them. And I'm not going to spend any more time talking about them. Strategy. Now, this is another thing that is like, this is like espionage. I'm not sure how much I want to use this either, but I should use it a little. Disrupt relations. This is complicated. This is... If I want to make Cao Cao mad at Sun Jian, for instance. If it's possible, again, Zhuge Lian will send, say, you should send somebody. It doesn't really cost us much gold compared to Goodwill. And in theory, it lowers the relations between those two. And you might be able to break up alliances or make them angry at each other enough that they could attack each other. I don't know if I trust the AI that this would ever work. And it would require a lot of fiddling around that I'm not sure I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, I th I'm not even sure if there's a way to see... Like, if you select Cell Cell, can you see what his relation is with other factions? I don't even know. There's probably a way, but I'm not actually sure how you could see that. Because um, the map just shows you our diplomatic ties, I think. It doesn't even show you any of these boxes. Anyway, you, you, you hopefully you understand the principle of the command. Whether I can make it work or not is a good question. Uh, collaborate, this is for prefects, so one of the downsides of prefects is it opens you up to another uh, espionage option where you've, you've assigned a couple cities to a group of officers or a prefect and their officers. You can try to get the prefect to basically rebel against their liege and go independent. So if we solicited the surrender of Liu Yan he probably would have a prefecture of these two cities, although we might be able to abolish the prefecture. Uh, or the pre-saint, I guess. But uh, while he has the pre-saint, someone could try to make him rebel, and then we'd be right back to square one. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see. That doesn't sound super, super useful. I'm more into it for building up my cities and building armies and conquering people. But it is cool that there are technically all of these diplomacy, strategy, espionage options. Rumor is the one that I've had the most success with because you select a city. So let's say uh, let's say we're currently at war with Han Zhong, and we were. They sent some armies at me a while ago. Um, I know they've got a lot of officers here. This is kind of one of their main outposts, and they've been fighting. This is where my this is where most of my troops are. Most of their troops are. So we could say like Han Zhong. Let's see if we go rumors in Han Zhong. Assuming I can find it. It shows you, you know, there's lots of officers. It shows you the order and how far away it is and who's good at it. If I understand correctly, this will lower the order, which is questionably valuable. But I think it reduces the loyalty of, or it will attempt to lower the loyalty of the officers that are in this city. Which might mean that we could, after doing that, uh, personnel employ them if, if they suddenly drop down to low loyalty. So, you know, there's some cool options like that. Sovereign? Oh, I don't use this stuff very often either. Council is like... I'll, I'll want to try to... I'll try to show this off during the Let's Play. Uh, this is like a... It's almost more roleplay. It asks your officers for their suggestions on what to do. <laughs> and they will suggest things and you can let them do it or not. If they do it, it'll cost you action points just as if you assigned it. Or you can say, I want to do it myself. I generally... Maybe I'm a bit uh, micromanagey. I just want to do it my own way, but... You know, I, f I do like the roleplay idea of having the, 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 the submitted officers giving us counsel. That seems kind of cool. Districts. Uh, this is setting up a new district. Uh, you can establish an ed district. Uh, change the size of it. You know, edit, add, or remove cities, or demolish it. I think I call them precincts. Pre 
prefecture is the guy that rules a district, whatever. Um, we'll talk about that if we if we survive long enough. We'll make one of those eventually. Strategist is just assigning our current strategist. Um, sadly, Red Ankylo is actually better than Zuge Liang. I think it's because he's got better overall stats, although Zuge wins on intelligence. Um, I'm, I might, I'm not sure what the most important stats are. I would assume intelligence, maybe intelligence, political charisma, or some combination of those, because they're not really combat exactly, but anyway, uh, there's that. Ranks, okay, I'm only going to spend a little bit of time here, because it is kind of complicated, but as your faction leader rises in prominence, our title increases. It doesn't show our title here, actually, but each sort of section here, each group of, um, each group of titles has a, a rank that, like your officer, in this situation it's Liu Bei, he has to reach a certain title to get access to these officers, basically, these ranks. You assign an officer to the rank, and it increases the amount of soldiers they can command, or gives them statistical bonuses. Uh, not a ton, sometimes both. So if you're at the maximum rank, you could have a marshal that has 15,000 soldiers. Um, they get paid more gold, of course. You do get paid. And they get some bonus leadership. At the same time, you also get uh, ministers that are really good at politicking. So the, the idea is you assign your best officers to have the best armies. You can have the larger sizes, some statistical bonuses. They might be better at running their cities, but you pay them more. You can only assign them to these ranks if they meet the deed minimum. Deeds are accomplishments. Military victories, uh, researching, building, recruiting soldiers. Just basically any action you take gives you deeds. So you need a minimum number of deeds. Zong Hui here has 15,000, so he's already ready for these ranks. So I could just put him up here if I wanted, for instance. Um... I think they lose some loyalty if you fire them or demote them. You know, they, they want to move up if you if you can. Can I not move the blue Anculus? I do find that that um, that window is a little bit finicky sometimes. But you could just, you know, cancel it and auto set it all. I'll try to, you know, I will be focusing on the viewers, right? So if you're in my army, I will be trying to promote my viewers the most. Because it makes sense. And then I'll be giving them jobs, a fitting, you know, official for the East Sub Officer, um, you know, whichever your name is, the Pixel or, or, or the Fella or whatever. Um, and yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I like the system. It's a little bit complicated and it it's a little obtuse. I think it's difficult to guess how it works at first glance. But um, the little symbol here means they're available for promotion. They've got enough deeds. Assuming I can... Ah, I have to click it on that side. I see. So they have enough deeds... That they could be upgraded. That's the available promotion. The upwards arrow means that they have been promoted once I hit confirm. Or, in, you know, theoretically, keeping track of they got demoted. They won't like that, you know. Also, if they had 7,000 soldiers and you demote them, they can't control that many soldiers anymore. So, the main thing I find is trying to get larger armies. Larger units are really important. So, building up those deeds so that you can upgrade them and have them... Uh, run larger and larger armies very very good so that's an important button but kind of complicated mediate so i haven't used this much but in the middle of our campaign and i depends on how far ahead of time i get while i'm recording this but if we have live viewers if i'm streaming this or or future tubers that are commenting if you're in my faction and you have two characters that are getting along, and maybe I've put them in the same army, or you're in the same city at the very least, if, or you're just friends in chat, you've been chatting. We can, in the middle of the game, uh, marry people, for instance. It does need one male, one female. You can't, no, no gay marriage allowed, no same sex. But uh, in theory, we can allow marriages, and we can allow swore, sworn siblings. Um, sworn siblings... These things do have advantages. If you're in combat with duels and stuff, these actually do give you some bonuses. Um, but as we've learned, uh, you can only be a sworn sibling with same sex. So females to females or males to males. You can't have uh, boy-girl sworn siblings. And you have to have boy-girl uh, marriages. So I guess there's one or the other. That's kind of how the rule works. That's all the commands! 
only one hour in. We're, we're not quite done. But that's the main... Honestly, city and military and personnel are where you spend most of your time. Diplomacy and strategy, I won't use all that often. And sovereign is more once every year or so kind of thing. Squads. So, I, we're, we're mostly done on this. There's not too much to talk about. Squad information, all the same stuff as when you're creating the unit is available when you're looking at the squad on the map. So, they can be afflict afflicted with status effects like Confuse, um, Misinform. So, Confuse is basically stun. They don't do anything. Uh, Misinform is basically they're running away for a couple turns. Uh, there's stuff like that. And it shows you the names of the officers and the deputies. Uh, how much gold they carry. They don't. You don't actually pay the troops, so you don't need to carry gold. You carry gold if you want to build stuff in the field. So there are things you can um, build. Um, there's camps, turrets, walls. These are generally more defensive structures. Although you could use them as like a aggressive... Like if you're not quite ready to conquer a city or they've got a bunch of troops, you could try to build some fortifications and fight them in their land with 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 buildings you built right so there are some actually pretty neat strategies there with build so you need to bring gold with you if you want to do any of that basically um food uh is not good to be at zero you want food to feed your soldiers troops is just their strength that's sort of how much hp and offense they have willpower is used for tactics and strategies which depending on the unit they will have different options Tactics uh, are based on the aptitude of the leader. So S rank will generally get you three, A rank will get you two, and B rank will get you one. And they do different things. And I mean, I'm not going to be so in depth that I'm going to go into them all right now. But, uh, you know, it, the game gives you decent tutorials. We'll show them as we're playing the game. There are a bunch of cool tactics. They cost you a certain amount of willpower, and they do special attacks. It's pretty cool. They're based on the. Officers, their aptitude, and the success rate, I don't know what it's based on. It might sometimes... Probably leadership and war, mostly. Strategy, on the other hand, is based on your intelligence. Uh, you can just light a fire, extinguish a fire, try to misinform, which makes the enemies run away. Perturb uh, confuses them, so they're stunned. Settle heals one of your allies. Ambush is like a special attack. I'm not sure how this damage works on this. Uh, it can definitely fail and do nothing, but if you're in a forest, you can do like a maybe like a critical attack on um, not cavalry, but like you know you get an ambush attack. And blunder makes an enemy attack one of its allies. Um, but these are like based on the intelligence. Like th these are like advanced strategies that are difficult to pull off. They're not guaranteed. Tactics generally don't fail, I don't think, but strategies are a little bit more hit and miss. Um, you can attack. Which is, uh, well, there's nobody quite close enough to attack, but if you attack, you just, both units will fight each other, so you'll take a little bit of damage. It's like a Fire Emblem, you know, you take some, you attack, and the enemy gets a counterattack, so you both take a bit of fight. You know, your two armies sort of clash, unless you're shooting arrows, in which case it's one directional, generally. And, uh, surround would be all of your units that surround an enemy attack at the same time, so the enemy only gets one counterattack, and everybody else gets some free hits. Uh, they still spend their turn to attack, but uh, they get some free damage, basically. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can build a, a building, repair a building. Retreat is probably what we should be doing right here. Uh, it has them start running back to the base where they came from. It's not the dual retreat. This is the unit retreat. Um, but yeah, that's kind of... I mean, it's it's not super, super complicated here. Um, you, can, you can also set them to auto-follow and auto-move and stuff, but... A lot of times we're just going to be moving people around, hiding in forests. Now, one thing, this, this, just, I just want to rant for a second. Attacking Jean Ning sucks. I did not realize that enemy buildings exerted zone of control. You can only move one space along these three buildings on this road, and the next tile is poison. So, it looks like this guy, Ding Zhang, can move two squares on the road. Normally, he could move like five or six squares on the road. But this workshop stops him if I move here. He can move this far, but it's through the poison. He can get to the forest through the poison. So I've been just being crushed by these things, actually. They've been... The, the three buildings here just destroyed me. And attacking from this 
this place was just a nightmare. I had to take this big long path. The enemy stopped me here, choke pointed me, and then choke pointed me again. And we all ran out of food. So, like, our attack on this place has failed. They only have a couple units left that technically we outnumber them, but I think we're just going to starve and it's game over. So, all of these guys basically died. It was a terrible, terrible waste of power. Um, so, if you're going to... You, you want to send enough food, basically. Food is the most important, is, is my moral of the story. And uh, I'm probably missing some things on the general overview, but I think, you know, we're an hour and five minutes here to this video. I think that's all I want to talk about for the general gameplay. Um, you know, I didn't get into siege weapons or, or ship battle. There's a lot of depth. Actually, I think I'm being attacked right here. This, uh, this guy is currently on his way to attack this port, which I don't have anyone defending. So he'll just take it over and then I'll have to send some units out to fight him. You know, this this save is not in a great situation, to be honest. <laughs> I've made some mistakes, got a little bit lazy. And if I want to win the game, I'm going to have to do some some corrections here. I, I, I really wanted to, strategically speaking, I really wanted to... Uh, maybe I'll just put on the big map. I really wanted to conquer this because then I won't have any undefended borders, right? Like once this is conquered, I don't need to defend these two cities. And I can take all of my extra food and troops and either push north or maybe push down this way and take over this because this is another good choke point there's only one road here and i'm already defending along here so uh i kind of wanted to limit my because i've got enemies 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 every direction basically and uh being in the middle of the map you know stra strategically speaking kind of sucks it may might have been smart to try to get an ally either these guys or maybe sal sal would have been nice he's been attacking me a lot over the river kind of sucks but yeah, strategically speaking, not the best. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's it for my overview. I am going to go back to the uh, unit screen and show you uh, the progress on inputting everyone's units. Anyway, hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea how the game plays. I'm certainly not, you know, pro champion, but I do know the basics. And I'll get better the more we play, so yeah, it'll be fine. Um, oh yeah, so I guess it's kind of nice to show this. There's a screen that shows you all of your cities and all of that. We'll use this all the time. But there's also a screen that shows your military units and if they've taken their action or not. Um, oh, this is one of my guys. Oh, I thought it was two enemies. Okay, so Liu Fei, I can actually show you a little bit of combat. I missed up. I wasn't paying attention to the flags. So this is one of my guys and there's some spears nearby. Cavalry is not really good against spears. So I could use a tactic on him, but... We'll take a little bit more damage than he does. Also, we technically outnumber him, but he's got... Uh, Aegis is a defensive skill, and uh, Spears are good against Cavalry, and I don't know if these guys are super strong. I don't know if you can see their stats right now. Well, you can see the unit stats. They're not bad, but we might have slightly better overall. Um, that's pretty similar. We just have one guy running, and he's a Spear General, not a Cavalry General. <laughs> This is not my best design. I was getting a bit lazy. Uh, but in theory, we could, like, let's say, move back here. And instead of, like, well, we could just try to duel him. I didn't talk about duels because he might he might not even accept. Is there no one who dares fight me? All right, great. I get to show you one of the mini games. I'm really bad at these, but he gets three, we get one. <laughs> I don't usually do, use a lot of duels. We fight on the big bridge. Alright, we're fighting. So, I think it's paused right now, right? Confirm gets us to start. It's sort of real time with pausing. You've got your HP bar, your Muso sort of charge bar, your your stats. He beats us in stats. Um, you can go offensive, defensive, spirit, which gains you Muso and has average. So, if you're on attack stance, you do a little bit more damage, but you take a lot more. Defense, you deal little damage and take a bit less spirit is just average but you charge up and then fury is like special attacks which require a lot of spirit uh, if you're really good and you have uh, items like special horses and special weapons you can do other things we don't have any of that so we'll just see what happens here um, so far so good okay so they swapped out with someone who sucks let's kill him He's concentrating on defense. 
So this guy was a huge mistake. We, we, the AI tried to swap out because they've got three people. Now, if you're playing and you're with your sworn brothers in a duel, they will come to your fr come to your aid a little differently and kind of help you out. Special. Um, this is where spouses and sworn brothers really kick in. But we have one bar of Muso, I guess. He's half dead, and we can we don't have a lot of special attacks. Let's be honest. This guy, he's okay, but he's not great. Um, we could increase our attack power or our defense, or we could just do a special attack. Almost killed him just there. All right, he's gonna run away now. If this guy's tough, we might have a problem. He's yeah, back to the first guy. So he's got his Muso. We got ours again. Um, I mean, honestly, we're still in the lead. The thing is, I guess they had three officers, but maybe one of them didn't join. You know, I'm not sure what makes all three officers join into battle, but like I said, if you're Sworn Brothers, much more likely. Maybe we can take out these two, because Zong sucks. Alright. He's got a bit of an edge on us, but... Okay, this is gonna hurt. Oof, yeah, that's real bad. Uh, we're basically dead. We could retreat at this point. Uh, there's a success fail chance. Um, I think we just go for the mortal blow and hope that he doesn't get his Muso in time to kill us. Although that charged him up an awful lot. Oh, he got his third guy to show up. <laughs> uh, well... It was three to one. We might have been able to take two with a bit of luck, but that was not ideal, for sure. <laughs> so what happens? Uh, well, we could have been killed, but we were in fact captured, and our unit is gone. Now, if we had won against all three of them, which is very unlikely, we would have destroyed their unit. <laughs> so, you know, dueling is very powerful, but there is definitely the chance of death. You could be killed and um, or just lose. So. I'm not great at the dueling minigame, but I will say if you put three officers in a unit rather than one, it's much easier, especially with Soren siblings. Especially, especially if you bring legendary fighters that definitely aren't going to die easily. Zhang Fei would not have had the same kind of problem because he's uh, way, way stronger than that last guy. Um, so, you know, point is, if we have some 99 power officers from chat leading us, maybe I'll try to do some duels. I'm glad I got to show that off. There's also, uh, it's hard to like force the issue but there's also a mini game for um what's it called uh diplomacy so basically if you're trying to recruit someone like it could happen while we're trying to do goodwill or recruiting someone employing someone where they challenge us to a debate and instead of using your combat stats you use your thinking stats and you have a debate and it's another mini game that i'm not necessarily very good at and it it's completely different, and I'll show it off when we get there. But, uh, you know, that's where some of your personalities and your, your intelligent stats might come into play. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's cool. We got to see that. Good. So, anyway, that's a pretty good overview of the game, I think. That I feel like... I didn't want this... I mean, we already spent probably more time than I planned on it. So. so, enough of the overview. Let me show you how the recruitment page is looking. Reminding everyone that made it this far to please submit more uh, characters. Even if you submitted one. I'm pretty sure I can handle more now. And I don't mind adding the people in, it's no big deal. So it looks like I've added 26, but a fair number of them are just my own creations. I'm trying to decide, it depends on how many people submit characters, of course. But I'm going to add a few channel historical characters, let's just say. So some of you might remember that I've done some solo character challenges from Final Fantasy. It's a fairly popular game on the series. So in addition to the faction Ankylos, which... I kind of like the idea of having them. At least some of them. I don't know how many yet. Uh, I think I'm going to have some Final Fantasy 1 uh, heroes, let's say. They're not necessarily super powerful, but uh, I want to throw them in. Uh, where was the thief? I thought I was, I was going to click on him. Yeah, thief. So, uh, you know, I gave him the best portrait. And uh, don't worry, he's got amazing stats. He's going to be very helpful. Um, he can technically steal, though. Uh, so, <laughs> he's better than the FF1 thief. So, you know, I got some things like that going on. Um, I still haven't 100% decided, uh, what I'm gonna do with the Blue Ankylas and Blue Ankylo and Cat Tankylo will be in there, probably. But, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep a few of my own characters for fun. And, but mostly I want to bring in a whole bunch of, uh, viewers, of course. So, I have tried, at least up to now, to get everyone to match as well as I can to what they've submitted. Um, 
I'm hopefully I haven't missed up any portraits. Not everyone submitted models and stuff, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, but yeah, like, you know, there's room for adding some more stuff here. Um, sometimes, I think I tried to make notes. Some people ask for skills that I may not have available. The divine skills and all the other super powered skills are, they're unlocked by certain accomplishments in game. So they're a little bit overpowered. I wouldn't mind selecting them if they were available. But if I can't, I'm going to have to do a backup. So if you wanted a bow skill, I might just give you archer skill instead, which is not as strong, but it's all I got. Um, if I do manage to finish my current Liu Bei campaign, we should unlock a few more skills, but getting everything requires either downloading a clear save file or playing the game quite a lot to unlock all the events. And I think you have to beat the game in 10 years and beat it with a female ruler. There's a bunch of stuff you have to do to unlock everything. And I'm, that's not really what I'm planning on. So if you, if you ask for a skill that I don't have, I'll do my best, but, uh... Like I said in the original video, I only have the skills I have on the list I showed. Um, but yeah, anyway, those are the names that you can kind of see all the names. I'm not going to go through everybody right now, but um, I will, at some point as we play, as we recruit them, show off more. Um, this is this is so far our only really low uh, standard character, actually. And I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to give him, but uh, you know, I'll give him something, something fun. And, um, yeah, it's fun. I'm, I'm enjoying it. We haven't had too many, uh, p portrait overlaps yet. Um, if you still haven't picked one, uh, yeah, that's fine. What I'm going to do is go to the new character one. I just show you, um, it's that it should be pretty easy, basically. If there's a name under it, someone or two people have been using it already. It's not the end of the world if two people pick the same picture. As far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to matter. But you're sharing a face, basically. But if you're still on the fence for picking a face, or maybe you want, or making a character, or you want to make a second or third character, uh, these are the ones that have already been selected, basically. So I'll show these off fairly quickly. But um, yeah, I mean that might help you make a decision if you still are looking for somebody. But uh, yeah, there's. A, I mean, turns out there's a, well, six, eleven pages almost times sixteen. That's uh, was it like two hundred portraits or something? That's pretty good, honestly. So um. Yeah, there's tons of spots open, no big deal. I'm not going to hover over them all again, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm looking forward to the series. Uh, I still don't know exactly when it starts. I think I'm going to leave it, like, once this video goes live, I'm going to wait, like, one more week or so. That brings us to the 25th, 26th of February. Maybe I'll just plan to start at the beginning of March, because uh, I want to give at least a week more for recruitment. Hopefully, you know, drum up some support, maybe... Uh, I don't know where else we can advertise, but everyone go ask a friend. Get 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 your buddies to submit some more names because I think it'll be fun. And then I need a, a little bit of time to get them all inst inserted. And you know, sometimes if people do want to make changes, some things take a little bit of time. So people, if you give me a big long list of officers to like and dislike and sworn siblings, that takes a little bit of time. And you know, I, I just need a little bit of time to do all that. So a couple days to make sure I've got it right rather than messed up. All right, I think that's it. I think I've. Let's talk about everything I want to talk about. Hour and 20 minutes in, Blue Rankilo. Blue Rantilo? That's probably the way it is. But anyway, I uh, hope you're hyped to see the series. Uh, I'm uh, I'm going to try to... I don't know if I'm going to beat my game. I'm going to play Liu Bei some more. And I'm going to try to fix my kind of poor scenario. I'd like to get to the point in this campaign that I'm pretty confident that I could win it at least. <laughs> you know, if I've got a better army than Cao Cao... At that point, I feel like I could be like, all right, I'm pretty sure we'll be all right. But I'm still kind of like maybe number two. Like, I think he's got more cities than we do and maybe more troops. So he might be a little bit stronger and I'm not 100% sure we can take him just yet. I need to I need to consolidate my, my, my uh, borders and then have a big battle and see how we do. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not I'm not going to clear a bunch of games to get all the skills unlocked, but I want to be capable of when we're playing the let's play not making a bunch of stupid noob mistakes and getting us all killed in the first turn although that might be funny in a way <laughs> all right folks um yeah i think that's all to talk about for the fifth time thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed and are excited one last time if you haven't submitted a character yet please check the discord or the original video where we're keeping track of names i mean you can submit them here but i didn't go over all the details so it won't really set you up very well and uh, like I said, all's well. 
if you have ideas for a second or third character, I think it's safe to say now that there will be space for it. There's no room to worry. There's no reason to worry about it. And, um... Yeah, please. The, the more the merrier, actually. I mean, it, it's more work for me, and I don't, I'm not trying to what, complain about it at all. I actually think it would be better to have lots of viewer names. And then when I make the game, uh, when I start it up, it, it will take me a while to set it all up, of course. But I will, I will have, if I have lots of characters, then I can give the Ankylo forces a good start. And then the more other characters are in the free officer pool, the more fun it will be, I think to find them as enemies and try to capture them or recruit them. Um, or maybe it'll just be funny because you decided you hated Tsao Tsao and he, you know, if, if you were working for one of his neighbors, maybe uh, we'll, we'll find you in, in as a prisoner or maybe Tsao Tsao will have recruited you and send them, sent, sent you after us or had him command you to, uh, you know, steal our own officers. So anyway, point is, I want to focus as much as I can while I'm playing the game on the submitted characters and put a less less of a focus on the random I mean I, I mean I don't know if I showed this off don't worry let's just add, let's just spend another hour on, on my video here. it's fine I, I did want to show at least very briefly my officer lift this what I mean by there's a lot of officers in this game this is my current currently recruited number of officers there's a ton of officers in my faction and, like I said, I'm not even halfway through conquering. So, as we hit the mid to late game, there are just so many random people. Now, not all of them are equal or even close. So, there will be some officers that if we manage to recruit in our campaign, I'll probably want to use, right? Like, if we manage to get, uh, well, for instance, Zuge Liang. He's classic, top tier. He's got... Where is not that one. This one. Um, he's got actually more intelligence than we can generate when we create characters. Absolute capacity. And he has a really good skill as well. Um, he's, he's got a pretty good skill. <laughs> um, he's got a spouse. He does not have any sworn siblings. I think he's got some children as well. Probably some of the other Zugays in there. Um, but the point is, if we recruit someone like this in the Blue Ankylo faction, I will have a hard time not wanting to use him. But... He won't be my main strategist or main, uh, my main combat strategist either because I will be focusing on my own creative characters. But he might be a sub-officer for one of you guys, which would be kind of cool. So that's kind of my plan is to have the, the useful officers be sub-commanders for my viewers, which it might not be ma min-max the best, right? Like it might be mechanically weaker, but I want to see you guys have some fun. Uh, and there are a ton of just... I don't recognize half of these guys at all. They're just random people. I, I mean, I have no idea if this guy did anything. Liu Ye. Maybe he's related to Liu Bei? Seems possible. Um, maybe you could even see in one of these screens. Maybe he has a good skill. He's good with siege weapons. He actually has decent stats. He's probably meant to be related to somebody important. You could read about him. There's a story. Maybe he's nobody important at all, but... <laughs> you know, there's the, the, the game does make bios for people, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he doesn't have any relationships. So, anyway, the point is, there's some characters in here that are just garbage. And I might recruit them, because we do need a lot of officers. But I'm not, pl like this one, this guy is terrible, right? He does not, he's not good at anything. Unless he had a good skill, and I don't think he even has a skill. He doesn't even have a skill. Sees, no stats, no skill, garbage. Um, he's just somebody's son, no big deal. <laughs> I don't want to use these guys. I want to use uh, viewers. <laughs> these guys, I don't even, he's just looking at the clouds. He just wants to go, you know, um, well, have a little nap in the middle of the day, bird watching or something, you know. Forget those guys. <laughs> Alright, folks. Blue has completely lost sense and sensibility. He's just rambling about stuff at this point. I hope you got something out of this video. You learned a little bit. You prepared a little bit. If you're a pro romance three kingdomer you can leave me some uh, tips or corrections if i messed up but for the most part i'll be playing at my own pace and speed and i, th I think we'll be okay so uh that's it for real this time thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed and have a great day <laughs>